This video is helping us find slope by counting. Remember back when we started doing this that we said most of the time our slope was going to be written as a fraction. And that top number was going to tell us whether to go up or down. And the bottom number was going to tell us whether to go left or right. So the numerator, if it was positive, told us to go up. And if it was negative, told us to go down. The denominator, if it was positive, told us to go right. And if it was negative, then it told us to go left. So let's draw a coordinate plane. And just give ourselves a couple of points. So say I have a point here, and I have a point here. What I need to be able to do is to count from one point to the other. And it doesn't matter which one we start with. Say I started this one. I'm going to have to go up two, one, two, and then I'm going to write down a positive two since I went up. That's going to be my numerator. And then I'm going to go over to the right, one, two, three. So I'm going to have a positive three. This means my slope is two thirds. I go up two and over three. That means my rise was two and my run, one, two, three. So I could think of this as rise over run. You may ask yourself, what if I counted the other direction? What if I counted down and then to the left? Well, if we counted down from here, we would go down one, two. So that would be a negative two. And then I could go back three to the left, one, two, three be back on my point, which is a negative 3. Negative 2 over negative 3 reduces to be positive 2 over 3. So I still get the same slope. And if I draw the line through there, it is heading up from left to right, so it would be a positive slope. Let's look at another example. Say I have another coordinate plane. And I have a point way up here, another point down here. It doesn't matter where the points are. We're just going to practice counting from one to the other. So say I started with this top point, and I wanted to count down to get to this other point. I would count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I would have a negative eight. Then I'm going to count over to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Since I went to the right, it's a positive six. Now here I have negative eight over six, which would reduce to negative four over three. That means if from this original point I went down four, one, two, three, four, and over to the right three, one, two, three, that that point would also be on my line. From that point, if I go down four, one, two, three, four, and over to the right three, one, two, three, I'm back on that line. Now what if I had wanted to count up instead? If I had counted up from the bottom point, I would have counted up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, giving me a positive 8. Then I would have gone back to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Since it went left, it was a negative 6. Of course, that would reduce to 4 over negative 3. So if I went up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the left 3, 1, 2, 3, I would be back on my line. Up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the left 3, 1, 2, 3, back on my line. If I had the line drawn in there, it is a negative slope. It's going down from left to right, so it makes sense. Um, the one thing we need to remember is that negative 4 over 3, that negative can go with the top number or with the bottom number. So it can be with the numerator or the denominator. And it still all means the same thing, even if it's written out front. You just choose which one you're going to put it with. Notice, just because it's negative doesn't mean I make both of the numbers negative. I only make one of them negative. If they were both negative, they would cancel out to make a positive. 